Hello, my name is Matthew Turner, and this is a brief guide to using Quantum Ole C. Soon, I'm going to be taking you through how to calculate a couple of key cross-sections for the exemplar molecule water, but first, I'm going to be giving an introduction to the code. Quantum Ole C is a code for calculating electron molecule scattering cross-sections, which utilises the most recent suite of R matrix codes and interfaces with MolPro and UKR Mol Plus to generate accurate cross-sections. Some of you may be familiar with Quantum Ole N, Quantum Ole C's predecessor. In this section, I will be briefly taking you through the features of which Quantum Ole C has, which Quantum Ole N did not. Quantum Ole C allows for automatic generation of configurations, symmetry detection, and handling of degenerate states. It also provides more accurate ionization cross-section calculations, and has access to the most recent version of our matrix codes. Between these three things, not only is Quantum Ole C more accurate, but it is also significantly easier to use. Quantum Ole C has been around for a little while, however we are bringing out a new version of it, Quantum Ole C 1.2. Here I will be taking you through a couple of new features of which Quantum Ole C 1.2 has. Firstly, Quantum Ole C 1.2 can calculate non-resonant vibrational excitations for ions and neutral species, which is especially useful for studying plasmas. Secondly, it also can utilise effective core potentials for ionisation cross-sections. This allows for the treatment of heavy atoms such as iodine or tungsten. Should you be interested in Quantum Ole C 1.2, we're currently offering free trials. To take advantage of this, please email support at quantumol.com. I will now be taking you through an example of how to use Quantum Ole C to calculate elastic scattering cross-sections and electronic excitation cross-sections of the exemplar molecule water. To start a new calculation, one clicks File and then New. This brings you to the screen which allows you to input your geometry. One method of inputting the geometry is by manually adding atoms. To do so, you click the Add Atom button. In this case, I will be adding a hydrogen atom, giving it some reasonable Cartesian coordinates, and clicking OK. And as you can see, this causes the hydrogen atom to appear in the molecule viewer. I'll then add my second atom, in this case oxygen, again giving reasonable coordinates, and clicking OK. And again, that adds the second atom, and you can see here that it, that has been added to the molecule coordinates, and you can delete these atoms again by clicking Delete Atom. And then finally, I'll add my final hydrogen. And as you can see here, this has made a water molecule. Now this water molecule is a uh, fairly rough coordinates and you would probably want to be using a more accurate version of this. Fortunately, uh, Quantum Ole C comes uh, equipped with a geometry optimizing module as run by MolPro. So one then clicks optimize and it gives you some options. The first is to choose a basis set. This represents how many functions you'll be using in order to uh, represent your quantum mechanical uh, wave function. And second, it will give you the option of choosing your method. You can either use Hartree-Fock theory or use density functional theory with a hybrid functional B3-LIP. And finally, you have the option to impose charge. Should you click OK, then the calculation will very quickly run. And it will give you the option to save your molecule. In this case, I'll click No. So as you can see here, the results are a lot more accurate. Uh, it prints out the bond lengths and prints out a bond angle, which you can check is accurate. Another way of checking it will be to look at your molecule viewer and to rotate it around and have a look. Make sure that it looks reasonably sensible. At this stage, if you should feel the urge, then you can again manually uh, edit your geometry. Uh, you can re-optimize should you feel the need. But one important thing to do before moving on to the next step is to click the center button. This moves the molecule to the center of mass of frame, which is important for later calculations. Another method of imposing geometry is to use a pre-optimized geometry. One can do this by clicking on File, and then going to Open, and then clicking on Geometry File. 
you can select yes on clear all data if you don't have any data in already. And this will give you the option to find yourself a geometry file. So here's one I made earlier. And here is a water geometry file which I have pre-optimized. Now if I wanted to re-optimize this, that would be possible by clicking on the optimize button again. Say this time I want to use maybe a slightly larger basis set and also uh, use B3 lip. I'll click OK. And again, that's not doesn't take particularly long to do. Again, you can choose to save your optimized geometry should you feel the need. And again, as seen before, it will print out your geometry, your bond lengths, and your bond angle. Again, remember to center your molecule in the middle of the frame. And when you are happy with your geometry, and you have optimized it, and you've added all your atoms, you click Next. At this stage, it will notify you that it's going to be running a quick mole pro calculation in order to determine the symmetry of the molecule. So you click OK for that. And that won't take very long, and it will generate a molecule like this and gen generate a symmetry point group, which you can check. On this page, one will select the nature of their cross-section calculation and which orbitals they would like to be using. So you have two options at this stage. You can either use Hartree-Fock orbitals from a, a Hartree-Fock calculation or natural orbitals from an MCSCF calculation. For further information on which of these to use, there uh, will be a link posted in the description and also feel free to email support at quantumol.com if you have any questions. Again, one can select the basis set um, and finally, you have access to some advanced options. Now, had you, have you selected Hartree-Fock orbitals, then your advanced options consist of being able to use a effective core potential model, uh, as discussed earlier, and should you tick that, then you get to decide which atoms you would like to include in that. You can also artificially impose charge, as said earlier, so decide what charge a molecule is, state the multiplicity, state the symmetry group, and state memory usage. Uh, if you have selected MCSCF, then on top of all of that, you also get to decide what the active space is, which is the orbitals which are included within your calculation. The default active space is the valence orbitals, as defined by MolPro. However, feel free to change this if you have expertise in active spaces. We recommend that a rough maximum to the active space should be 10 active electrons in 10 orbitals, as computational effort scales factorially with both of these factors. Again, if you have any questions regarding this, feel free to email support at quantumol.com in order to uh, ask questions about what might be best for you. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will be using natural orbitals as these are more useful for electronic excitation style cross sections. So once that's decided, you can click the next button. This will bring you onto a page which gives you information on the R matrix. So firstly, you will have an R matrix sphere size. The larger this is, the more expensive and longer the calculation will be. However, one will want to make sure that their molecule is sufficiently encapsulated within the sphere. Therefore, if you're working with especially large molecules or especially large basis sets, you'll want to make this R matrix sphere size a little bit larger. The second thing we discuss is your uh, method for calculating uh, correlation. Now, if you have selected uh, natural orbitals, then the method which is, the only method available to you will be a close coupling method. Whereas if you have selected Hartree-Fock orbitals, then you will have a static exchange or static exchange polarization method available to you. More information on these can be found in a paper referenced in the description of this video. Next up, you can select the scattering energy grid. The larger this is, the more expensive your calculation will be, but the more accurate it will be. And then finally, one can select the advanced options for this, one can change your total number of states, uh, give a vertical excitation cutoff, and it adds some extra virtual orbitals. Once you are happy with your R matrix setup, you can then move on to the next page, which allows you to select which different cross sections you are interested in calculating. So, as standard, one will calculate the total elastic cross section 
uh, calculate their eigenphases and calculate excited state cross sections should you have selected the natural orbitals route. You have some other optional cross sections which you can look at. You have an ionization cross section which uh, uses the binary encounter Bethe ionization methodology. Should you select this, then you have some advanced options which you can look at. You can either use Koopman's theory in order to state the first ionization threshold, or alternatively, if you have experimental ionization data, then you can input that manually. The next thing you can have a look at is uh, differential momentum transfer and rotational cross sections. Should you select this, then you have the option to change your energy step. If you doing these sorts of calculations, then they are quite large and have quite large output files. So it's recommended that maybe you make your energy grid a little bit smaller. Uh, you can also either use calculated dipole moments, or if you have access to experimental dipole moments, you can input those manually. Another thing which you could do is uh, vibrational excitation cross sections, quantum 1.2. For this, you can again change your energy grid as, again, this is quite a large calculation, so you might want to make it a little bit smaller. You could also accurately estimate dissociative attachment cross-section. Now, for this, one must provide your dissociation energy. Uh, this can be obtained through various different methods. It's uh, available on many online databases, including our own database, QuantumLDB. So that is compulsory, but optionally, you can also uh, request your vibrational frequency, and you can also state what you think the fragments which will be formed will be. So you can uh, define the fragments and define the electron affinity of those fragments. Finally, you can also calculate uh, higher energy inelastic cr uh, electronic cross sections. And for that, then you have again the option of using Koopman's ionization energy or defining your own ionization energy. For the purposes of this calculation, we are only interested in calculating the total elastic cross-section and the excited state cross-sections. So I will allow those to remain ticked and I'm also going to remain ticked the eigenphases. And then I'm going to click Run. When you select for the calculation to run, you will see this calculation log. And generally a calculation of this type might run for, say, 30 to 60 seconds, but it depends on the size of your molecule, the size of your basis set, and your R matrix sphere size, and finally, on which cross-sections you are requesting. When the calculation is finished, in this case after 2 minutes and 25 seconds, this dialog box will pop up. In this dialog box is a list of the different cross-sections and properties of which you have requested. The first one of this we will discuss is total elastic cross-section. To view the total elastic cross-section, one clicks the View button. As you can see, you have both the elastic and um, total elastic cross-section and the Born correction to that. You can display this either linearly or logarithmically in both the X and Y axes. By displaying this one, for instance, logarithmically in the Y axis, one can see resonance peaks, which wouldn't otherwise be apparent if you were to be displaying them linearly. Uh, when you're happy with your uh, display, then you can click the Save button, and this will allow you to save your image as a PNG. If you wish to save it as data, then I will explain how to do that later. Uh, you can also display the rate. This rate is plotted with respect to temperature. And from this, you can see the Arrhenius fitting parameters. Again, this can be displayed logarithmically or linearly. One can also view the eigenphases by clicking View. Uh, again, displayable linearly or logarithmically. And uh, the PNG of these can be saved, as with any of these images. Next, you can uh, have a look at the excited states. As you can see here, here are the excited states. Again, can be displayed linearly or logarithmically. And again, can be saved. You can view the rates of these excited states. And again, it has Arrhenius fitting parameters. And then finally, one can have a look at the data sheet. Now that in the data sheet, you have information on the molecule, information on the calculation of which you've carried out, information on the molecular orbitals which have been uh, predicted, information on the excited states and the dipole moment and other key qualities from the calculation, some more information about the R matrix uh, setup, some information on resonance, and then next up you can have a look at your cross sections. So if you were to click on view data next to each of these cross sections, then you have raw data rather than the PNGs. 
and this can be saved with the save button. You can also have raw data for the rate and raw data for any other cross sections you might be interested in. Should you be interested in comparing these to something to make sure you've got accurate results, then at the top we have a link to the data in the QuantumoDB database, which is a database run by us, and you can compare your data to this to see if it's nice and accurate. Should you want to publish this work, then one would use the reference which is provided at the bottom here. When you're done with all of this, you can export your results to a directory by clicking on export to directory, select your directory, click on that, and then save it. When you've saved that, then should you be starting from scratch, you can open up your results directory. And by doing so, <laughs> this dialog box will pop up again and you can view that again. Thank you very much for listening to this tutorial. If you have any further questions, do not hesitate to email support at quantumo.com. Also email if you're interested in a free trial of this software. And thank you.